I've got a new daily driver, but it wasn't the kind of car that I would normally choose to have. It's a bit of a left field choice actually. And it's got a lot to live up to. My last daily driver was a Porsche 911 Turbo S and I absolutely loved it. It looked cool, did things like drag raced it against the MotoGP bike. It was utterly nuts and it was good to live with in some ways. You see, being a 911, it wasn't that practical. It's not great in the back. Obviously there are some back seats, but they're not that usable. And because I've got a young daughter, I need to fit a baby seat. You can fit it in the Porsche and squeeze someone in behind just about. But when you're trying to carry luggage and stuff like that, that front boot just doesn't have enough space. So I needed something a bit more practical, but also delivered exciting performance. And you know what? This Audi S8 fits the bill perfectly. Buy, sell, car, wow. Now you might have seen this car already because we've used it in quite a few tracking videos. It really does stand out. You're probably thinking, what is it with Matt and green cars? And you're right, I do have a thing for green cars. You see, before this, I had a green BMW M3, and before that, I had a green Audi RS6. This is actually quite an unusual green. It's called District Green, and it's sort of like a metallic -y pastel, if there could ever be such a thing. <laughs> One thing's for sure, you're never gonna see this on any other S8 in the country. I must apologize for how dirty this car is. Look, ugh, it's winter grime, I haven't bothered to clean it. Though I do think that cars should look dirty over winter and you shouldn't go too crazy cleaning them. It's nothing to do with the fact that I'm just too lazy to actually get and wash the car myself. Nothing to do with that at all. At least the engine bay's clean. Don't look at that, don't look at that. It's nothing to do with me, don't look at that. Anyway, the engine itself, 4 litre twin turbo V8, puts out 571 horsepower and 800 newton metres of torque. It drives all four wheels via an eight speed automatic gearbox. The engine is pretty much the same as you get in the RS6. It's just got 29 horsepower less, though the torque figure is the same. Anyway, it's got stacks of performance. Now I'm going to see how quick this Audi S8 is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing core mile. Let's do it. Launch it. We're building up the boost. All traction issues. Went sideways a bit there, that was crazy. 3.53, <laughs> and that's with not an ideal launch. 11.76. Cold tires, went a bit sideways. Proof that this car is playful and still put in a decent 11.76. It is very, very quick. Let's give it another go with a quarter mile, come on. Three point three four to sixty. Did get a better launch. What's the quarter mile though? Eleven point five nine. This thing is so quick, and it's just so luxurious at the same time. But how does the S8's acceleration actually compare to the RS6's? So this is what happened when I launched my old RS6. Launch control. Here we go. Full boost. Oh, 3.01, we might do it. Come on, get the 11.2s, come on. 11.27. Interesting, huh? Now, if you'd like to see what happens when you drag race an S8 against an RS6, click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen now. I'll follow the link in the description below. Both this S8 and the RS6 are big, practical cars with loads of performance. The S8 may be slightly longer, but it's not quite as practical as the RS6 was. Main reason is that you've got a saloon tailgate rather than the big liftback tailgate that you get with the RS6. Also, the boot's slightly smaller, so we've got 505 litres of space here, which is enough for fitting things like baby stroller and all the paraphernalia. However, the boot capacity on the Audi RS6 is 565 litres, which is just that little bit more useful. What also makes the RS6 slightly better as a family car is the fact that you can fold down the rear seats, but you can't in this at all. Bit of a shame that, especially when you want to carry like flat pack furniture back from Ikea. I did want to do that once and couldn't use this car. I had to get another one. Can't fault the space though. This isn't even the extended wheelbase version because you can't get the S8 in long wheelbase form in the UK. But you don't really need it. There's loads of knee room. Headroom's really good as well. And it's very easy to fit a baby seat in the back here. In fact, there's so much room. Grace actually loves it. She loves traveling in this car. It is her favorite car to travel in so far. She told me so. Although she can't really talk that much. 
However, it's a bit disappointing that there's no Isofix anchor points also on the front passenger seat like you have on some other cars, because that just gives you some extra choice of where you want to put the baby seat. Although I do like these sports seats themselves, lovely with the diamond quilting and the S logo. Another minor complaint that I have is the fact that this car isn't specified with the extended leather up here on the dash. Instead, you've got like this polyurethane material, which while squidgy and stitched, just doesn't feel as special. Anyway, I'm going to start the car up because there's something I want to show you. Because actually, while I'm complaining about that, there are loads of other bits of equipment fit to this car, which I really do like. I love the surround view parking camera. So you just press that button when you get to a narrow spot. And if you need to squeeze through without covering your alloy wheels, you can just use this top down bird's eye view. And you can actually see views from different cameras around the car. There's even a 3D mode there like that. So I just press that. And it's like a computer game. You can even see the camera crew there. Look at there they are. Yeah. Another thing I like is an option fit to this car, the £5,300 upgraded Bang & Olufsen Stereo, which is absolutely banging. The car's also got a heated steering wheel, which believe it or not, is a £250 option. And it's a bit of a faff to turn it on. Rather than having a switch on the steering wheel, which you should do, you have to press this button to activate this menu. Come on, menu. Ugh. I actually have to turn that off first. Press this button, let's try again, to activate that menu, and then you can turn the steering wheel off and on there. In fact, you have to press that button to activate that menu to sync your climate control as well. What a faff. What's less of a faff though is connecting Android Auto or Apple CarPlay because they're wireless. It's wireless. I like that. That's good. Thing is though, all this goodness obviously comes at a price. The S8 starts at £103,000 and this one with options, £110,000. So if you're thinking about changing your car, you probably need to sell your current car, don't you? And you can do that through CarWow now. Just click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to check it out. All you have to do is upload some photos of your car, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. You pick the highest offer, they'll come to your house, take the car away, put the money in your account. It is so easy. If you'd like to do that at a later date, just simply Google Help Me Car Wow and we will help you sell your car. One of the things I really love about this car is that you get adaptive cruise as standard with it. So I'm just going to engage it now. You can use it on the motorway, you can use it on normal roads, it's really good. So it's going to use a radar to keep me safe distance from the car in front, which I'm doing now. And you can reduce the gap if you want, if you fancy doing a bit more tailgating. It'll auto steer to keep you in lane and it's a really good system, it hooks you up nicely. Unlike with a Tesla, where if you put a little bit of steering input into it, it'll disengage. This one just lets you kind of work around it. So likewise, if you want to accelerate to get a bit closer to the car in front, it won't disengage. Once I lift off the throttle, it will then go back to doing its thing. It's really, 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 really useful. And I do so many miles each year, and this car just makes it easier with this adaptive cruise because you just have to think less when you're driving. You're just sort of monitoring everything rather than having to do things like corrections in the steering and so on and so forth. Really like it. Considering this car is so huge and it has a four litre twin turbo V8, the average economy figure over the 6,000 miles it's done of 22.9 miles per gallon is actually pretty good. And that figure will include the fact that it's been used not only for cruising around and driving around town, but also thrashing about around twisty roads while filming. And of course, doing many drag races with it and if you want to see a drag race with this very car click on the pop-out button up there for the link in the description below to be fair when I've been just cruising on the motor at 70 miles an hour this car has actually managed around 30 miles per gallon which is pretty impressive one thing that really stands out for me with this car though is just how serenely quiet it is so quiet it's packed full of so much soundproofing you got acoustic glass you hardly hear anything I love that that's one of the advantages of the fact that the S8, while a performance car, it's also a luxury limousine. Do you know what? I make phone calls when I'm driving on Bluetooth, and normally people can tell when you're driving, but when you're driving this, they have no idea. They just think you're sat at home. It's got me into trouble before. Like, my girlfriend Jo has been like, I thought you were supposed to be on the road. You said you had to leave to go somewhere. Like, I am. I'm actually driving. I'm in the S8. It's just so quiet. You can't tell. I need to prove it, though. She'll need me to prove it, <laughs> to be sure. So let's just try something. What I've done is ask one of the members of the CarWow team to jump in the S8 and take it for a drive. And then I've called them on my mobile phone and we're going to have a conversation and you'll see just how clear it is. Hey Ryan, how are you? Hey Matthew, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right. It doesn't really sound like you're driving. How fast are you going? Well, I'm doing 60 right now, so I very much am. You're doing 60. I can't hear any car noise. Normally when you phone someone and they're in their car, it's pretty blooming obvious. With that car, it's just not at all. Yeah, you know what? It's quite nice, 
Do you know what it can do? It actually uses the speakers like noise cancelling headphones to like counteract some of the unwanted noises. And I think that's part of the reason why it's so clear talking to you on the mobile phone. But I'm not sure. Are you lying to me? I'm going to be like Joe now. I'm going to be like Joe. I actually think you're not driving at all, mate. You're sat at home in your pants playing computer games when you said that you were supposed to be heading off to a new car launch somewhere. I mean, I'll tell you what, if I was, this is a pretty good steering wheel setup I've got it going on. And his Calvin's are pretty comfy. <laughs> I believe him. The SA gets adaptive air suspension, which you can raise and lower. Also, it has a special function where a camera reads the road ahead and will set up the suspension accordingly if it spots a bump or something like that to soften it up so you can just glide over it. Let's do a little illustration to show how that works. I'm going to test it out using this glass, this bottle of water and that bump. I'm going to put the cup in the cup holder. Then I'm going to pour the water into the cup right to the brim. We're going to drive at that speed hump at 20 miles an hour. And we're going to see if I spill any, even though this water is precariously close to the top of the glass. Here we go, here's the speed hump. We're going to go off the other end. Not a drop spilt. It's so smooth, but we need a comparison. I've jumped into BMW M340i, got the same cup, it's just full, but the armrest is a bit tilted, which isn't helping it, but the suspension already, I can tell, is firmer, even though we've got it in comfort mode. Look, it's already spilling now, but here comes the speed hump, what's this going to do to it? Yeah, a little bit of spillage. Oh, <laughs> we'd already lost them before. That glass isn't quite as full as it was. But, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. It's definitely a little bit more fraught, isn't it? You can tell the difference just from this illustration of how much smoother that Audi is. Oh dear, look. A slight pool of water in there. The SA has something called elevated entry and you can't get it on other A8s in the UK. What it does is cause the car to rise upon its air suspension when you open the door like that to make it easier to get in. So you don't need an SUV. And then it drops back down again when you drive off. The S8 also gets rear wheel steering, so when you're going quickly, it'll turn the back wheels in the same direction as the front wheels to aid high speed stability. Then when you're going slower, it'll turn them in the opposite direction to the front wheels to make the car more manoeuvrable. And it means that this long car actually has a turning circle of 11.4 meters. That rear wheel steering also makes this car surprisingly agile for such a big thing on a twisty road. So what I'm going to do is put it into dynamic mode, which is real pain because you have to look all the way down here and press this button. There's no button on the steering wheel like in an RS model. So here we go. Let's go into dynamic. Come on, where are you? Is it dynamic? Dun no, it's efficiency. Don't want that. Dun and then finally, dynamic. Well, I'm going to go into manual mode for the gearbox as well. The way this thing goes down a road, absolutely surprising. Even with the suspension in sporty setting, you've still got that lovely air suspension waftiness. It tightens it up so it doesn't lean so much in the bends, but it never gets like out of control or flaps over bumps. Such an impressive thing. Also, you've got that quattro four-wheel drive traction as well out the bend so even when it's slippy like this you can deploy all of your horsepowers to the road and it just absolutely goes for it the gear shifts are actually decent as well when you change up in manual mode there's like a like it gives you a bit of a jolt i mean it's artificially done to add to the experience but and you don't really need to change down that much either if you don't want it because there's so much torque from this four liter twin turbo v8 do you know what I often forget about this car's capabilities. You know, I'll be driving it along on a twisted road and go, oh yeah, I've got the S8 version, because you forget how sporty it is, because it's just so comfortable. And then I'm like, let's have some fun. But that doesn't happen that often, because it does disguise its ability so well. And in some ways, I wonder whether I'd just be better off with the diesel, you know? Nah. There is one slight annoying thing that I found, and that's that the car will auto shift up, watch this, even if you don't want it to, so that's in first, auto shifted and I didn't pull a paddle, which is a bit annoying. You know, if you're in manual mode, you should have full control. <laughs> There's something beautiful the way it just floats down the road. <laughs> yeah, it just stays really composed with the bends. <laughs> These are really slippy conditions, but they show this car's ability. <laughs> Do you know what? I should get out for a sporty drive in this thing more often. I'm not making full use of it, you know. Well, I am really impressed with how this car goes down a twisty road. It doesn't have the same level of involvement as another big 
luxury saloon car that I've had as a daily driver. If you want to see what that car is, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. It is an insane car that does almost everything you could ever need a car to do. Though overall, I do find this a bit more comfortable and easy to live with. For this car to be genuinely good fun to drive, surely you must be able to do donuts in it. Is that possible? Well, here's a little segment I recorded earlier to see if it is. Oh, let's go the other way. Oh. Oh. I guess that's sort of doing donuts. So then, what's my verdict? Well, I'm really loving this car. I'm liking it a lot more than I thought I would. It wasn't something I was particularly excited about getting. That sounds a little bit blasé, but hey, I'm a motoring journalist. I'm used to having lots of cars. But I've grown to love it. And I think, actually, in reality, it's the daily driver out of all the ones I've had that has been the easiest and the most pleasant to live with. It's great. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you agree with my verdict, let me know in the comments below. If you don't, don't write anything. <laughs> Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to car right to sell your car. All you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. It's dead easy. Thanks for watching.